so through the process of a electromagnetic induction then why we require a transformer so the main advantage of a transformer is we can step up the voltage or step down the voltage according to our requirement apart from that the efficiency of the transformer is very high it will be in terms of 97 to 98% and the transformer since it's a static device it doesn't contain any moving parts so the losses will be less because of that the efficiency will be more so the transformers we can also use for the low power applications these are the necessity of a transformer <clears throat> then let us discuss about the working principle of a transformer so the transformer works on the principle of electromagnetic induction and the mutual induction <clears throat> as you can see here so we have a core this is a core so we have a primary winding and we have a secondary winding to the primary winding we are going to give the ac supply when the current passes through the primary winding the flux will be created in that and because of the mutual induction the flux will also be created in the secondary winding also the emf induced due to the flux with respect to primary winding is called as self induced emf and the emf induced due to the secondary emf due to the mutual induction is called as a um, mutually induced emf so here from primary to secondary we don't have any physical connection because of the mutual induction so from the primary the secondary terminal is getting with the supply this is how our transformer will work so so emf induced in the primary because of a self induced emf is given by minus n1 into d5 by dt and e2 is given by minus n2 into d5 by dt then next will be a transformer ratio how we can step up or step down the voltage uh, it depends on the number of turns what we are going to use in the primary and the secondary so that's why uh, k transformer ratio is given by n2 by n1 if your n2 is greater than n1 then it is called as a step up transformer where k value will be greater than 1 if your n1 is greater than n2 then your k value will be less than 1 then it is called as a step down transformer so in terms of uh, Current also we can write the equation for a transformer ratio. So as we know that from the definition of a transformer, so it's a static device which will transfer power from one circuit to another circuit, which will transfer the power. So as we know that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can be only converted from one form to another. So when transferring a power from primary to secondary, the power remains constant. Only we can vary the voltage and the current. When you are going to step up the transformer, the current will be decreased to maintain the power constant or when you step down the voltage, the current will be increased to maintain the current constant. That's why the power V1 I1 will be equal to V2 I2. So V2 by V1 will be equal to I1 by I2. So already we have discussed with respect to transformer ratio which is given by N2 by N1 which will be equal to K. That's why for the transformation ratio K, either we can write N2 by N1 or V2 by V1 or I1 by I2. So these are all the formulas what we can use for the transformation ratio. Then a construction of a transformer. <coughs> if you consider the construction of a transformer, so majorly we have a magnetic core and the winding coil. So these two will be the major two parts which will be included in the construction of a transformer. first one a magnetic core so the magnetic core either it will be in the form of a square or it will be in the form of a rectangle and it consists of two parts which is called as a limb and the yoke the horizontal parts are called as the yoke and the vertical parts are called as the sorry yeah vertical parts are called as the limb so these are used coarse materials are used to provide the path for the magnetic flux and this core is made up of thin laminate, thin sheets and which will be laminated from each other. So, 
there will be two types of losses which will occur in the core one is hysteresis loss and the other one is the eddy current loss so generally a high grade silicon steel material is used to make the core so eddy current loss depends on the width of the material so how much width we are taken for the core it depends on that and the core is made up of number of thin laminations as i already told and the thickness of the laminations will be very small it will be in the range of 0.35 to 0.5 mm so you can see the thin laminations here in between the thin laminations there will be insulation which will be pressed together to form the core and the transformer core material will be of hard rolled steel or the cold rolled steel then next one will be the winding so on the core we are going to use the winding so there is a conducting material what we are going to use it's called as a of a transformer is a winding so it is of, of either a copper or of aluminium the winding will be a primary winding and the secondary winding for the primary winding we are going to give the supply and the secondary side we will be connecting the load and depending on the construction we can divide the transformer into core type and the shell type depending on how we are going to place the winding so if you are going to consider the core type so this is a core type and the winding will be the core will be surrounded by the winding so this is called as a, a core type if you are going to consider with the shell type so this will be the shell type and the winding will be placed inside so the winding will be surrounded by the core here we will have only one magnetic circuit path but here we will be having two magnetic circuit paths so this is the difference between the core type and the shell type and uh, one more thing here so here primary winding will be placed one side and the second winding will be placed on the another yoke but here in the shell type the both the primary and the secondary winding will be placed on the same yoke part so now you can observe here what i have explained so here this is the core what we have on the core the winding is surrounded so the core is surrounded by the winding the last part of the core is surrounded by the winding the primary coil and the secondary coil are ordered on the opposite limbs it will be placed on the opposite limbs it will be separated so general forms of the coil uh, coils may be it may be a circular one or a rectangular one like that and for the thin laminations what i told right between the sheets they are going to use a laminated sheet insulated sheets as a paper cloth or cooling duct in these cases if you consider with the shell type we can observe this is a shell type this is a core so two hollow we have in between that they are going to place with the windings both the primary and the secondary winding will be placed on the same limbs so here the winding will occupy very small portion and each high voltage winding is a sandwich between two low voltage windings so both the l and h will be placed on the same thing so this type of construction is used for the high voltage applications.